In 2018, the Fuego volcano erupted in Guatemala, and in 2011, Japan experienced a devastating tsunami. More recently, in 2023, Turkey and Syria were struck by a significant earthquake. These incidents are all provoked by the fact that the ground under our feet is in constant motion. Today, we live on the ruined remains of a supercontinent that began to disintegrate 200 million years ago. Every year, the world map will increasingly change until all the land on Earth merges into one continent again. Natural disasters are just another confirmation that this process is inevitable. So, will we survive Pangaea 2.0? Look at the world map. Don't you think the continents on it look like puzzle pieces? It wasn't until the early 20th century that German meteorologist Alfred Wegener saw that South America and Africa seemed to be split apart. Then he began to find many strange patterns associated with minerals, plant fossils, and the remains of ancient animals in different parts of the earth. For example, coal deposits found in Pennsylvania are the same age as those found in Poland, Great Britain, and Germany. The Lystrosaurus also raised a lot of suspicions. The remains of this ancient mammalian reptile, which died out 250 million years ago, have been found in Antarctica, India, and South Africa. But how is this possible? Wegener realized this is only possible if the planet used to have one giant supercontinent, which eventually broke up into smaller continents. He called it Pangaea, from Greek meaning the whole Earth. He announced his hypothesis to the scientific community in 1912, but he was ridiculed. However, in the following decades, scientific discoveries and research confirmed the Pangaea hypothesis and developed a theory of plate movement. One of the proofs of its existence could be these rounded granules found in the Craton of South Africa. Only the high temperature created by an impact force could melt the deposits into such glass balls. Scientists determined that during this period, our Earth was hit by a meteorite. The same granules with the same age were also found in Earth's strata of Western Australia, indicating that they were not yet separated by an ocean and formed a continent called Valbra. All this land at that time looked like this. Then a second supercontinent called Yor was formed, and about one billion years ago, Yor joined the newly formed continents of Nina and Atlantica, resulting in the creation of the supercontinent Rodinia. There are suggestions that at that time, our Earth collided with a wanderer planet, and because of this, Rodinia began to disintegrate. But after some time, the continents formed by the split gathered again, so about 600 million years ago, the supercontinent Panosha was formed, which also broke up and gathered again, becoming the already known to us Pangaea, surrounded by a single ocean called Panthalassa. Then the conditions on Earth became more favorable for the development of various living creatures. Trust me, the creatures of Pangaea were the strangest creatures you've ever seen. Archaeologists have managed to figure out what the living conditions were like on Pangaea after they studied various cratons in the USA and Europe. It became known that in the equatorial region of the ancient supercontinent, there were lush tropical rainforests similar to today's Amazon jungle. Where the environment became drier, forests gave way to vast fern prairies. Such a tropical climate and abundant plants were favorable conditions for developing various unusual animals. This is Tanistrophius. It lived in the areas of Pangaea, which in the future became Europe and Asia. Its neck was as long as that of a modern giraffe and reached three meters, more than twice as long as the animal's body. Tanistrophius could rest quietly by the ocean, and noticing a passing fish, it threw its neck into the water like a fishing rod and grabbed its prey with its teeth. The living conditions on Pangaea were so favorable that even ordinary lizards there looked like giant dinosaurs. Despite its small size, the already mentioned Lystrosaurus was also a specific animal, dubbed by some as the shovel lizard or even the dog walrus. The Lystrosaurus didn't have teeth, though it did have two massive fangs with which it dug up the roots of plants in Pangaea's arid parts. The Drepanosaurus was something like an improved reptile and a bird simultaneously. The length of the animal was no more than half a meter. A typical Drepanosaurus had a graceful neck and a triangular skull like those of birds. The most interesting thing is that the animal had a large claw on the index fingers of each forelimb as well as on the tail. With its help, it probably easily tore open bark and dug up insect nests in search of prey. If all of these animals had survived to this day, they would have complete superiority over their relatives. 
but about 252 million years ago, the worst mass extinction in history occurred. Most scientists believe the reason for this was the fall of a giant meteorite. At that moment, all animals on Earth were on the same supercontinent, and the catastrophe destroyed 96% of all marine species and about 70% of terrestrial ones. It turns out that such an arrangement of land on the planet makes its inhabitants quite vulnerable. The same scenario awaits humans. In 1974, Canadian geophysicist John Tuzo Wilson decided to follow the pattern of how lithospheric plates collapse, collide, and overlap each other. He realized that all of these processes are cyclical. According to his forecasts, supercontinents form with regular cycles about once every 200 to 600 million years, and one day, all the continents on Earth will merge into one again. This news became a sensation in the scientific world, and various scientists began to calculate what this new supercontinent would look like. For example, one version belongs to an American geologist, Christopher Scotese, who, studying the history of lithospheric plates, noticed that Africa is already slowly merging with Europe over millions of years. Italy, Greece, and almost everything in the Mediterranean is part of the African plate. From this collision, the Alps and the Pyrenees were formed. It also causes earthquakes that hit Greece and Turkey from time to time. Australia, in its turn, according to Scotese, is already migrating north and colliding with the southern islands of Southeast Asia. Scientists predict that eventually a supercontinent called Pangaea Ultima will form, but there is an even better option, namely Amasia. This is how the future supercontinent is seen by American scientists from the scientific journal Asterisk Geological Magazine Star. They believe that all the continents will unite into one large landmass grouped around the equator. All coastal areas will look like Brazilian beaches. Life there would seem like a paradise to us, which cannot be said about the interior of Amasia. This powerful continental mass will absorb a large amount of sunlight while at the same time, there will be little ice at the poles to reflect it. The central arid region would be cut off from the moist winds that used to come from the oceans. This is just a small list of changes that will be faced by people living on the supercontinent. However, not only the climate but life on the planet will become very different. Having studied different versions of the future supercontinent, illustrator Massimo Petrand created a universal version of Pangaea 2.0. Due to this location of land in the central regions, it will be very hot because most of the rivers will simply dry up. Therefore, prices for houses in coastal areas will be even higher than now. As all the oceans merge into one, water will circulate differently, creating many typhoons. Strong winds could destroy houses or even cause a tsunami wave that will cover coastal cities. Most likely, no one will live in the northern part of Africa or the western part of the USA because there will be a vast desert. Moving to New York closer to Central Park will no longer be the dream of most people. Inhabitants of Australia, who are used to the desert climate, will find themselves right next to Antarctica. Tropical forests would form between the cold and warm climatic zones. Scientists suggest that there would be many new species of primates and exotic birds. Scientists have even determined what the average inhabitant of Pangaea 2.0 would look like. It will be a person with dark skin, dark hair, and dark eyes because most of the population, as mentioned, will choose to live closer to the equator. Even the language is likely to be the same in the end. In general, the inhabitants of Pangaea will become more tolerant of each other than the inhabitants of modern continents. On Pangaea 2.0, Everyone will be a genuine citizen of the world with shared traditions and ideals. Although the scenario could be radically different as well, such an arrangement of countries on the same land will provide more opportunities for wars, which will be cheaper for countries' budgets. After all, weapons won't have to be transported by ocean, and the offensive will require less time and effort. Also, any pandemic on the supercontinent will spread much faster, which in the worst case could even lead to the extinction of humankind. The fall of a sufficiently large meteorite will repeat the mass extinction of the times of Pangaea. As a result, Pangaea 2.0 will become completely empty and uninhabited, apart from cockroaches, of course, because they can endure any catastrophe as usual. Would you like to live on such a supercontinent? Let me know in the comments if you feel like taking the risk. Look at the map and choose which country you'd move to what.